Now, if you can't quit smoking, blame your genes. Scientists have just released new research pointing to differences in genetic codes which make you more or less likely to smoke. Their findings also show that your genetic code could dictate whether you smoke more or less if you're already hooked. Well, Dr. Carrie Stephenson is the executive chairman and president of research at Deco Genetics in Iceland. He joins us live now via broadband from Reykjavik. Uh, Dr. Stephenson, the studies seem to suggest that starting smoking or your addiction to smoking is driven very much by your genetic makeup. How surprised are you by the findings of this report? Actually, if you, if you smoke, you cannot blame that on your genes because the genetic predisposition to becoming hooked on cigarettes is not the same as genetic predisposition to beginning to smoke. And actually, there's, there, this variant in the sequence of the genome that we discovered, it makes you li more likely to sm smoke many cigarettes if you smoke at all but it has no impact on whether you start to smoke or not. So the smoking initiation is your responsibility. So what have happened? As no, I was and as always. Yeah, no, I was going to ask you, whatever happened to nicotine addiction then? Because we've been told all along that tobacco is highly addictive and that's the problem. Yeah, and the, the addiction, how addicted you become is influenced by genetics. So, so if you begin to smoke and you have the mutation or the sequence variant that, that we discovered, you will smoke more. And if you have this variant, it's going to be more difficult for you to stop smoking. And, and what is very interesting about this also is that if you think about this in the context of smoking-related diseases like lung cancer, an overwhelming majority of those who develop lung, lung cancer are, are long-term smokers, so it looks like lung cancer is purely environmental disease. However, our study shows that you are genetically compelled to seek the environment that causes the disease. So all of a sudden, you know, we have difficulty separating nature and nurture when it comes to pathogenesis of these common do diseases. You think, do you think your research could be used to diagnose or identify people who may have a high inherited risk from tobacco? Yes, I, 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 there is no question about it that discoveries like the one that we uh, published today and similar discovery that we published two years ago is going to have impact or m make it possible for us in the end to put together a test that allows us to find those who are at the highest risk of becoming, becoming addicted if they smoke. However, everyone can become addicted. So there is not, you, you're not going to get an absolution from the danger of tobacco, even if you have a genetic background that makes you less likely than the next man I, I from suppose, becoming addicted. I suppose the big question is, can this research be used to help people kick the habit? Um, I think that it is theoretically possible, but it's not going to happen uh, this year or next year. It's going to be a long-term project to help people to overcome addiction like this. But I think, I think that first and foremost, the responsibility is yours, unassisted, just to, you know, to stay away from tobacco. And I, I, one of the concerns that we have always when we publish results like this is that people will use them as an excuse for a behavior that is not appropriate. And in my mind, smoking cigarettes is not an appropriate behavior. All right, Dr. Carrie Stefansson, fascinating stuff. We have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you.